They on the way. December of 2015, and that can still be viewed online. I took these steps in an attempt to save the city from going into a costly legal battle that I knew they were sure to lose. I'm here to thank and defend the commissioners that voted to fire former city manager Jason Park. I first met Mr. Barlow in the fall of 2015 when I was called to attend a meeting at City Hall to discuss the city's desire for me to gift some of my property to Edgewater for the construction of a six lane extension of State Road 442 that was said to connect to the 417 Greenville. The meeting was attended by Mr. Barlow and other city staff and oddly Mr. Glenn Storch, who Tracy allowed to run the meeting and deferred all my questions to. I knew Mr. Storch was an attorney for Miami Corp <coughs> but was shocked that he might also be Edgewater City Attorney. I later found out that wasn't the case officially, but he was partnered with the city in many dealings. I don't have time to discuss the details of that and subsequent other meetings now, but I've got copies of the letter that I have mentioned. This letter uncovers multiple lies that Mr. Barlow told to deceive, trick, and threaten me in order to take some of my property from me to give to Miami Corp. The value Mr. Mr. Barlow Stone, you're going to have to wrap it up in three minutes the, bar, the value Mr. Barlow and the city has argued that my property's worth is absurd for a property at the interstate intersection anywhere in the state of Florida if not the nation. Now I find out that Mr. Barlow was well aware of my property's value being that he was working exclusively with his partner Mr. Storch and this distribution center time is up while please. excluding sir, other right. Point of order. Mr. Snowden. Point of order please. No sir. Mr. Snowden. Thank you very much. Your time is up. I think you get three minutes. We get three minutes. Yeah. Did we not agree, Mr. Mayor? Mayor. Yeah. That we Mr. Mayor, we have a lot of people here. You did not run the meeting. I'm trying to tell people the truth of what, of what has happened. This is done. We have the video. We have a consensus. When the council has consensus. Thank you very much, Mr. Stone. Would anybody else like to sign? Mr. Doran, could you tell the mayor we have my time? Hold on. We had a deal, and we consensus, a consensus of the board, and that's everybody. Yeah. No, no, Mr. Mayor, you don't have to write it up. We have a consensus. Stop it right now. What you doing? I have my orders. Hey, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Mr. Mr. Doran, could you give him a little bit of education over here to the mayor? Because it's not fair if the city starts. It would take me one more minute. should be your name and your address. Eddie Clinton, 4790 Old Blue Ridge Road. You three should be embarrassed. You two. Yeah, you two. You're a bully. Yes. But you don't bully nobody else with people elected. Anytime. 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 Anytime.
Haney. I'm a resident and business owner in Edgewater, and my business address is 1851 Guava Drive, Edgewater. I come before you today as a disappointed and concerned citizen. As residents of Edgewater, we have one common goal, and that's for the betterment of Edgewater. Unfortunately, we all have a difference of opinion as to how to accomplish that goal. The disgraceful behavior displayed the October 26th special meeting was beyond unacceptable. I condemn the coup for hijacking Sergeant Burris' special meeting in what seemed to have a pre-arrangement. The actions of council were reckless and fiscally irresponsible. As elected officials, you represent the citizens of our community, and with that comes great responsibility. You have humiliated the residents and our city on a national level and cost us millions of dollars and jobs. We cannot and will not allow you to destroy, bankrupt our city. We cannot afford inexperienced and incapable counsel that lack professional acuity and acumen to serve and request the immediate resignation of the council in violation. I request that everyone in the audience in support of this request, stand and show your support. And if you don't resign, the state's attorney is going to help you do that. You don't throw a man under the bus who helped that man. You don't kick him when he's down. You help him. You save his ass. Now, I'm sorry, but I don't think it was wrong that the city manager was terminated that night by a vote of the council. Three members of the council voted this way. That was their choice. Now, that's the way it worked. And you people here are here tonight. Where are you during the meetings? Hey, how do you Why know aren't you at the meetings? Oh, we're here. Okay. Okay. Well, you know we're, we're, we're here now. We're here now. We're here now. We're here now. But the meeting, you know, it was a meeting that everybody should have been at. And then they would have found out. But the meeting was also held at 10.30 in the morning. It wasn't held like right now, was it? Because it was a steep meeting. Think about it. But I do believe two wrongs don't make a right. And I would rather have someone on the council that is very passionate about the job and the city. And I just feel that I'd rather have someone, even if it wasn't in the proper way, the reasoning behind it was it was a good reason. Like I said, I'd rather have someone who's passionate about the city, passionate about the job, rather than a yes man or a follow me man or whatever. And I'm sure. sitting back there, I know I'm probably going to regret leaving the building, but outsider tonight was mob men mentality. And that's not going to solve anything either. Good evening. My name is Eric Rainbird. I live at 2225 Fern Palm Drive, Edgewater, Florida. This is amazing. I wish this was at every council meeting. Where y'all been? Couldn't make it. Well, I'm probably going to be the first one to speak with non-personal feelings. I'm here. I... My daughter's buried here. I'm being buried here. I love Edgewood. That said, um, this is pretty sad. Um, people are posting on Newsy some pretty personal stuff. I want to point out some things about Edgewater and our future. Um, Tracy Barlow is a nice man, great guy. Look at all the friends he's got. You can't argue that. But we've had many special meetings to fix stuff that's just gone wrong. Um, a long time issue, health benefits of a cop that was rear-ended. 
Uh, it took a long time to resolve his benefits. Four cops had been fired right before their disability kicked in. I guess they weren't part of that clique or something, but uh, the fire chief, Steve Cousins, he was kept on for five months so he could make his 20 year pension. Just saying, not personal, I don't know Mr. Cousins, that's just a fact. Uh, there was a black employee named Mr. McCann. He was fired 10 days before his probation, asked for a reason, they said they didn't have to give him one. Meanwhile, there's two cops that had to resign for tweeting, for texting some pretty questionable stuff that I wouldn't dare repeat. We've had so many special meetings to fix stuff that never should have happened. We had a hero cop, a hero, let go because he's a liability to the city. He saved the woman's life who was shot. That poor man had to come in here and beg. Everybody that works for the city, everybody that works for the city, none of this is personal, guys. There's a lot of personal out there. We got to let go of all that. Time's up. Eric has grown. I've met a lot of new friends, had a lot of acquaintances through there. Very happy and very proud to have had the opportunity to be part of that. Someone once told me that if you can leave a legacy and a footprint, then somebody knows you were there, you did something good for the community, and you the most you can say for it. And when Whistle Stop Park opens up, probably around March and stuff like that, that's to me is going to be my proudest accomplishment for what I have seen and what I've been on this council with through there, especially looking through the eyes of the kids that are sitting across the street. Having said that, I will also tell you that I'm very proud to have worked with Tracy Barlow. I probably consider him the finest manager that's ever been here in the city of Edmonton. service here as in the fire department rising all the way up through the ranks but to come in and become the city manager when he did to guide the previous mayor Mike Thomas and I don't know if Mike's here now or not it is Mike You're there. there he goes he acknowledge you good luck to you when you come in he guided him through the economic recession he guided him through the recovery these were lean years these were tight years uh, Mike's last four, I was on the council here with him, so we had to do some real tight budget control and crime here. And we reduced the debt. As a matter of fact, when Mike went out, one of the things he was proud of, the fact that we had shot the debt down from what it was years before, one of the few cities that did that. And right at the heart of that, those skills, those management techniques and everything, was Tracy Barlow. And I sat here through a number of hurricanes that came in, and our recovery, and how quick it was, and how efficient everything ran. And it's all a credit to Tracy Barlow. You've heard people come up here, talk about the great staff we have. You've had the gentleman come here that's worked all over the country saying what a great thing through there. We have a great city staff and a board of professionals, and it was all brought together and all created by one individual. I'm sorry to see him go. I think it's a loss for the city of Edgewater, and it should be rectified. Having said that, I'll tell you there's two ways to exit City Hall. Every politician faces it. One is when they open a the door and throw you out. The other one is when they open the door and hold it and say thank you. And with that, I hope I go with the ladder. And that's all the comments I have. William Daly, 6398 Nyka Court, Port Orange, 32128. Um, I just wanted to get up first and foremost and say that the best thing about this evening, not only about having the turnout of people showing their passion and what obviously following Veterans Day and all these men and women sacrifice themselves for to give us the freedom to come up and do so. Uh, the best thing I've seen this evening besides sharing it with my wife is uh, seeing everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, that's the only time that I've seen unity tonight. Um, I've come to speak on behalf of uh, Local 4575, which is the union that makes up the body of the memberships that is the employees of the City of Edgewater's Fire Department. Um, I think we've all lost sight of what that meeting was actually for. Um, and that was the fact that that was taken away from Mr. Burris. Um, and that's what I'm embarrassed about. Um, everything else that follows it, I'm sure is an emotional reaction that people can apologize for. But when you turn your back on a blue brother or sister or a red brother and sister that puts themselves out there, you have not done the job just like some of these veterans that are here you should know first and foremost that 
we sacrifice our, our mental capacity every day that we go to work and return. And I can't erase the images that I have in my head. And when you take away anything from me, whether it's my brother that's laid off improperly, whether it's my health benefits, whether it's my pension or pay, I make less than $12 an hour to start to run into a burning building when people are running out. My name is Chip Selman. I live at 2703 Evergreen Drive. And uh, I believe everybody here tonight is here for the same reason. We'd like to get your resignation tonight. We'd like to y'all. I'd like to know if the city attorney, what, what's the process of that? Don't they have a code of conduct that they have to follow? What happens when the citizens decide we want them gone? Direct, direct, I promise you. What do we, how can we get rid of them, Mayor? Well, tonight. You're, 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 you're elected officials. The elected official can only be removed one of three ways. One, they resign their office. Resign! And their stipulations on that. Sunshine law. Or three, they're voted out. That's the only three legal ways. They broke it. Uh, well, they could be theoretically recalled. A recall. Which is a way of voting them out. So you were correct, but okay. you know, well, can we do that? Is that something we can do tonight? We vote on. I mean, one lady, she went ran unopposed. You know, how are we gonna let her in? There? <laughs> if one person runs for a position is vacant, and no one else challenges that individual, when the time closes out, then by default position automatically goes to that individual even though no one voted for them. For us. I was born and raised in this city all my life. My father had a business. We've had probably the oldest business in Edgewater, been here 50 years. I remember when Tracy took over city manager, you know, I was a little skeptical. I'm in school with Tracy. I didn't know if he was qualified to do the job, but Tracy took the city of Edgewater under his arm like his own baby and nursed it and took care of it and as, as done great things for us. And I think what y'all have done to tra Tracy and the city is a travesty. I think we gotta stop it before it gets any worse. I mean, I, I don't think y'all are capable or qualified of doing this job. So we need to, we need to, well, we'd like for y'all to resign. That's what we're here for. It's gonna be hard to get rid of you. As we all know and love Mr. Visconti, um, I want to talk about it a little bit. He's 94 years young. He was he was the catalyst. Him and Mr. Uh, Dick Cuchetti will have the Pearl Harbor Remembrance Concert, which is now the largest in the continuous 48 states. It's because of you, sir, pushing us all the time. Uh, correct. This gentleman has come to probably he has better attendance than probably most of the council people that have sat up there for the last 30 years. He's always here. He wants to be here. And he's always pushing us to beautify this community, whether it's with the fountain or he wants to make sure that the American flag is prominent in the middle of the city. So I'd like to make a, I'd like to make a motion on behalf of Mr. Visconti. This new park we're having, it's uh, coming to uh, probably this spring sometime. And there's gonna be a roadway through there. And I would like to make a motion that we name that road through there, Mike Visconti Way. I think it's apropos for you, sir, that all the years you looked out for Edgewater, whether it's lawsuits that you knew about that squashed them, or whatever you've done, I'm proud to be your friend, and I tip my hat to you, and I'd like to make that motion that we made that roadway through the park, Mike Visconti Way. Sure. Well, <clears throat> I just want to bring to the council's attention that while you know, I have, I, I have no issue on the policy question, but uh, procedurally, um, and I think we experienced this, apparently I wasn't here, but we, you all experienced this at the last meeting. Uh, the council, I don't know if it's been a past practice of raising issues that are not on the agenda and then taking action on them, um, but that's not uh, allowed effectively. You, it is legal to make a motion and it is legal for you all to take a position without it being on the agenda. However, the Attorney General has indicated in many opinions that that is highly disfavored. 
And what is not legal is for the council or any government body in the state of Florida to take any action without citizen input on that action. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just giving you the message. You cannot do that. Now, you know, um, the concern is that even if you open it up to citizen input right now, with it out, without it being on the agenda, have you effectively really allowed for citizen input? Because nobody is aware that the issue that is being raised is going to be considered. Therefore, maybe, yes, there will be people in the audience, but there may be people that would also have attended had they known. Now, this is a small matter here, and I'm sure there's probably no disagreement, but I don't know. But well, and it's not a real road. Well, I understand, but I, what, I, what I think, I think, Mr. Conroy, is that, you know, this is symbolic of, you know, a procedure that maybe you all have fallen into that you've got to get out of. Uh, and, you know, a council person raising the question of doing this is perfectly appropriate, and a request that that be put on the next agenda for the full council to consider, for the citizens to be aware of what your intentions are, you know, that that's that's where we have to get into. Well, I can just move the clerk to put it on the next agenda. Sure, yeah. I mean, whatever, however you all approach uh, agenda items, I think you, you have a past practice of if any council member wants something on the agenda, they just notify the clerk and it goes on, and that's perfectly acceptable. I want to thank you very much for the talk. It's a very good prayer. I really appreciate the honor. And I want to thank you very much for even considering. Thank you very much. That's all I have. are probably opened a little bit to behavior that has gone on for four years and I hope that the present calm behavior continues on because as we all know you can hold a discussion at a normal tone of voice your what you have to say is just important whether or not you're calling somebody names or calling them stupid or etc etc so I just want to say that whether or not uh, I am actually reelected, I'm here to move forward in a positive manner to try to get Edgewater back on track in a positive direction. That's that's my job. <laughs> our job on the city council is to have some sort of a working relationship with the city manager. Whether or not we like them. That is our job that everyone in this room elected us to do, and that is what I will do. Yes, first and foremost, I see all of you guys are here, and you're very passionate about Mr. Barlow, you're very passionate about your town, and I am happy to see all of you here. And I would like to publicly apologize for my behavior at the last council meeting. That is not certainly how I was raised to behave. It's not certainly the way that I act. And I would like to publicly apologize to each and every one of you. Furthermore, in observance of Veterans Day, I would like to thank all the men and women who have served, who are currently serving. And I would like to thank the, our mayor, our current mayor, for his years and dedication to our city. And I would like to think that all of us will move forward in a positive direction. Thank you. Move on. Item number nine, board appointments. None at this time. Item number 10, other business. 10C, separation agreement for the city manager, Tracy Barlow. We have the floor. Well, as everybody knows, the uh, motion was made at the October 26th council meeting to terminate city manager, Tracy Barlow, and this agreement is per the terms of his contract. Council discussions. 
Yes, I, I think we need to table this for later on, as Mr. Stone has told us that there might be some acts of perjury that he's committed in an official setting, um, some misfeasance if it's proven to be, and I think we have an obligation to follow that path wherever it is. So I don't think we can agree on this separation agreement as it is. I think in reading the, um, his contract, if the administrator's third body finds that he did do these things, uh, he doesn't get his payout. Uh, we're obligated. Oh, so, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. so what I'm hearing you saying is you're making a motion to table this, and so that would require Mr. Mayor under Robert's rules of order, a second and a vote favorably to do so. Uh, there can also there should also be discussion on that point. Uh, if it's not tabled, then it would move forward as scheduled. We have a motion. Do I hear a second on this? Seeing no second, the motion fails. You heard Mr. Snowden tell you right there, he's right there for asking questions. He wasn't even able to finish. The allegations he made were substantial. We heard, me too. And you're just going to ignore that? I, he per, he's I, allegation of perjury in official proceedings. How can you in good conscience go forward? This can be tabled. We contact an appropriate authority follow wherever it goes, and that's what we're supposed to do, represent the citizens and the citizenry, not the ones just here, but the other 20,000 yeah, of the city. Okay. He's, he's got his opinion through there. However, I'd like to I'm say not that. done, sir. Proceed. Your bags are out there. To do this, to go forward with this payout when there might be acts of misfeasance, it, it, it's, it's wrong. We have to follow. We have to follow the law. We have to follow the contract. And he's, Mr. Stone has proof positive of these transgressions. So how can you sit there and vote for this? You're doing a disservice to the rest of the citizens. You're, you're, that's what you're doing. Think about it. If you want to be mature and professional, what would you sit back? Well, I'm talking now about me. Yeah. But if you vote for this, you're sending the wrong message because there's allegations on the floor and you're, you're just you're just brushing them aside for whatever reason. It's wrong. If you violate a contract, then you don't pay the man. Put it on the agenda. Wait till council discussion. Put it on the agenda. Please come to order. Wait till council discussion. Are you finished? Yes. Okay. I'd like to make a few comments. I spent 32 years in law enforcement. And there's a thing called probable cause. There's a thing called reasonable suspicion. And there's an office called the state attorney's office. What you are doing is making a criminal allegation in a public hearing. That is a matter of fact and record. I suggest to you, Mr. Snowden, that if you're going to pursue that, you go to the state attorney's office. We are not the state attorney's office. Amen. We are here on a contract, not Mike. Woulda, coulda, or shoulda. That is not our place. I'm not afraid of the truth. Okay, so then, Mr. So you know no, uh, you do not have the floor. That is the proper place to take your state attorney's office and take your case there with that. So that is not what this body is for. We're here for the contract tonight to go through that. I don't want to know what someone, just because someone makes allegations themselves, and I've heard some things for you to do, and I know the other side of the story too on this through there. So. I suggest you go to the state attorneys for those allegations, and I count this council that we maintain what we are going with the contract, not go on rumors, innuendos, or permanent hearings, because there question, are absolutely sir? no facts at this time to go with it. No, yield no, for a question? Any other council member would like to speak? Would you yield for a question, sir? Yeah, let's wait until the rest of the council okay. speaks. Any other council member wish to speak? Go ahead. Is he allowed to finish his statement? So we can uh, the he is. Yeah. 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 I hear it now. He was done. 
It's pretty important. No. No, you're not judging. You're, you're not going to discuss that. that. No. Where's the transparency? No. no. There's no transparency. This no. is not the state attorney's office, ladies Ms. and gentlemen. Mr. Attorney, is he allowed? Would he be allowed to finish speaking? At the request perhaps? of a councilman, can he finish? Uh, at, at the decision of a majority of the council, uh, Thank you. he can receive extended time, but not at the request of one of you or two. Of I you. say yes. Now, I will also add, though, you, the, you are mixing apples and oranges a little bit here. Mm -hmm. what, I think what you're focused on uh, is for cause or without cause. And he has been terminated without cause. That's what you all did. That's right. So that, that's, that's done. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you can't go backwards from that. Um, even if you had terminated him for cause for some reason, it would then have opened up an entire hearing process with testimony, uh, investigations. Uh, you know, a statement by anyone standing alone is absolutely meaningless without due process. So, um, you know, if, if these allegations were available to the council back before you started the process of termination, then that certainly would have been something that I think everybody should consider. But given the fact that you already terminated him without cause, I, I think that you cannot go back to that. Thank you. Okay, seeing no other person council member, we have a motion and a second. Could I have a roll call, please? Councilman Conroy? No. Mayor Gnasiak? Yes. Councilwoman Power? Yes. Councilwoman Vaught? Yes. Councilwoman Wow. Power. Yes. agreement uh, you need a new interim city manager to take his place and run the city uh, before you is an agreement for me to take on those tasks at the last meeting uh, you did vote for me to do that um, I want to thank you for your confidence in me first of all um, it's been uh, a challenging two weeks I've learned a lot there's a lot more to learn um, I'm willing to do this as an interim position until you can find another interim position. Um, there's discussion up at the next agenda or the next agenda item for how that is to proceed and we can just discuss that further. Um, but we, right now before you is my agreement. Council members have had an opportunity to go through the agreement itself. Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, I will look for a motion to approve the interim employment agreement to the interim city manager. I make a motion to approve the interim city manager agreement for Brenda DeWeese. Second. I have a motion and a second. I have a roll call, please. Councilman Conroy? Yes. Mayor Nazak? Yes. Councilwoman Power? Yes. Councilwoman Vaughn? Yes. Councilwoman O'Keefe? Yes. Item 10E, discussion on the search for the new city manager. Once again, Brenda. Thank you very much, um, again, for your confidence in me. I appreciate that. Um, since October 26th, I have been in contact. Uh, first and foremost, let me uh, assure you the council and the citizens that are uh, here and those that are listening regarding the allegations made by uh, Mr. Ben Stoughton, and I wish he would be here as well for the, uh, these comments. But uh, let me assure you, if you guys recall, those allegations were early, early on, you know, when he didn't uh, participate in the, uh, uh, the process of dedicating that road for the benefit of Edgewater uh, west of uh, the uh, interstate. There was four property owners. He was one of four that did not. We went through an eminent domain process. Once again, those allegations occurred very early in the process. Went through an uh, eminent domain process. I testified before a judge representing the city of Edgewater and the city prevailed and was awarded the taking. 
those allegations were also vetted through a deposition process that your attorneys, uh, both of the, uh, your sitting attorneys, uh, were there and vetted those allegations as well. Uh, they are false. Uh, if, they, if there was any uh, accuracy to those, we would not have prevailed, I'm, I'm assured we would not have prevailed in the taking process and you would have been personally sued based on those allegations by his attorney and, and unfortunately he has a good attorney in my opinion. Uh, there's other parts that you know that uh, your legal counsel will share with the you. City has a better attorney, so, right? They, yeah. Much better attorney, uh, <laughs> especially the eleventh hour fine. So, uh, but but because it's in litigation, there's only so much that can be disclosed public. And I think you guys will be uh, very uh, surprised and impressed with your city attorneys when when, when they can start to provide the, that information. Uh, so, uh, so they're not new allegations. They've been vetted. I've testified before a judge on those as well. Uh, the last thing I want to clear up before I, you know, send my thank you is a, uh, the Adam Burris is I want to remind you all that 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 situation, that pothole in that policy, and your policy was, uh, could have been corrected and was recommended to be corrected long before that meeting occurred, and that was uh, transmitted in the memo that is available to anybody online, and that was the bottom line recommendation. So, so that, that recommendation of your policy was, uh, was to correct it was done well before that meeting. So, move off to the thank you. I want to thank you all. I want to thank the community. I uh, had 33 great years, uh, 20 of them in senior management, and almost 11 in city manager. Uh, I was one of 200 of an awesome, amazing team that has done some wonderful things for this community. Uh, I was fortunate enough during my tenure, uh, or between almost my 11 year tenure here, that a, uh, we went through the, uh, rec the Great Recession, never had a single layoff. We uh, prepared for, responded to, and recovered from two major hurricanes with millions of dollars of damage. It's not one person, it's not two people that did that. It was a team of 200 amazing employees. I had the opportunity to work through a, a four different elections and 12 very different council members along that time. Uh, and some, it was very rewarding and very challenging at the same time. So I thank you all, I thank the community. It's my community, I'm not leaving. I'm gonna do something in a different capacity to help. Uh, without a doubt, if I could figure out how I could, you know, get on council, my wife never knowing I was on council, I would certainly be up there with you all to make a difference in my community. I encourage everyone here, don't stop tonight. Get involved. Make a difference in your community. Edgewater is too good to fail. I pray and I pray that after tonight we can start to heal as a community where there's a lot of opportunities. I continue to pray that Gary can balance his medication to be a productive on <laughs> Please come forward at this time. Last, last call. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, John Zeno, 718 Navigators. Uh, just in light of your comments, uh, Mr. Duran, um, what, in your opinion, since you indicated that the procedure that was followed by including a non-scheduled item on an agenda for a special meeting ended up with an action by the board or the council, what procedure needs to be followed to hopefully either rectify it or deal with it? I ask you that opinion. Well, uh, I think we kind of demonstrated that this, this evening and walked through it a little bit. Absolutely. These things can be raised at meetings such as this, but they have to be then agended <clears throat> into the future so that it is a part of a public agenda that's published in advance as required by law, and the citizens can be aware that the issue is going to be considered by the council, and then, and only then, after citizen input, can that vote or action take place? So are you suggesting that what occurred at the last meeting was illegal? No. I said a minute ago that it was not illegal for the council to act, and the attorney general has stated as such. 
But in those same attorney general opinions, it has been stated repeatedly that it is highly discouraged to take action without notice and full vetting from the citizens. So the, 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 the fact that it, it was done is, is behind us. Um, and the fact that tonight a se severance agreement, separation agreement was approved while on the agenda with the public being noticed and being here to give input uh, would certainly have cured, if there was any issue, would have cured that past action. You could have, the board, the council could have, having heard everything and having looked at the severance agreement, made a motion to uh, reconsider the action or move it in a different direction, which they did not, and that's not surprising. But um, the issue has now been fully vetted. And I think everything that was done, was done legally. So that the action that was taken, although legal at the last meeting, is highly inappropriate? It's uh, discouraged. So the, discouraged? Uh, discouraged by the Attorney General opinion. As well, the motion today made on the floor about conditions of his termination pay was as well inappropriate. Not as you stated. 